Uh, let's start. Improvements to font handling and uh, there might be people sh uh, who say that's shenanigans, what's all about that? Um, thing is, <laughs> um, we have a lot of tickets in our bug tracker about fonts. Uh, many are um, things um, that do not work. Font does not show up or is crumbled or whatever. And many others are enhancement requests. I try to collect everything here in the tech cloud. Green is enhancement, uh, yellow to red uh, with the uh, uh, importance are issues. I'm trying to uh, talk about the green stuff, only the green things because you need to be an expert uh, to understand the problem with fonts uh, when there's an issue. So I will talk about but three um, larger areas how fonts could be improved. The first one is um, things about substitution. That means you get a document uh, with uh, some alien font like Helvetica and you want or you have to replace it because it's not on your system. That's quite a, a typical thing and uh, it is implemented like this. Today you get in the, um, in the standard toolbar a drop down and the font name is uh, written in italic for this uh, font that is being replaced. And the tooltip says this font is substituted. It does not work in the uh, character dialog, so it's only in this drop down. Um, you don't know what font is actually replaced by what, and you cannot, okay, you know what I mean, so what do we have to do? First thing is, um, I'm trying to, to put all the, uh, the, the requests, uh, tickets that we have into user stories. I start with a, a persona, with the um, uh, target user. We have two personas, Benjamin and Eve. Don't want to go into detail in the user story to tell you what is the problem, what, do you, what the uh, user want to achieve, uh, for what reason. So Benjamin, as the standard user, does not care at all about the font. It has to work, and I would say it works somehow, but it's, uh, it's not perfect, but it works for Benjamin. Eve, she wants to see what the actual replacement is for the current selection, where the cursor is. But she also wants to see, um, in case a document has more than one font, what is uh, uh, over the, the whole document, what is replaced in the document. Two simple requests and it could be solved like this. Um, first of all, if you open a document, you can show easily an info bar. Here there is something that has been replaced. You can get a link on it where you can uh, go further to some dialogue where you can manipulate it, come later to this point. Second one is um, the uh, drop down that we have today. The uh, font list drop down could easily show what font has been replaced by which one. It's not a big deal, I guess. And finally, the dialogue uh, at the bottom. It's also not a big thing to show here what happened. Um, I will later um, come to the point with the icon. Um, the icon is here the indicator for, um, for something uh, special. So if you open the font list and a font is replaced, you get this icon here, some kind of warning icon. It is a bit better than the italic font. It is not really uh, obvious what italic means. An icon is a better indicator for kind of warning. It is a warning. So what else? Um, second part of the request was that Eve wants to get an overview for the full document and this overview could be in the document properties. We have a font section there and uh, it could uh, provide a list of all um, fonts there with a nice overview that, because actually you don't want to get the name of the font. Helvetica is or Times New Roman is uh, replaced by Nimbus Roman. I don't care about the font names. I want to see what the difference is. What does it mean to, re, uh, to um, substitute the font? And this um, preview could overlay two example uh, images and show just uh, nicely the, the difference. The, yeah, I think you, you uh, guess what it, uh, what's behind it. Next one. Um, 
it is a feature also requested uh, here for us that Microsoft has. If you store the document, do you still want to use the um, substituted font or do you uh, the original or do you want to use the substituted font? Uh, there's no mean today, Microsoft has it and uh, it is requested. The second one, the restriction is about that we do not need to spam the document with fonts. If we save fonts in the document, it should be limited to the used stuff only. It belongs a little bit to the question and solution is that we add just a um, checkbox below this list in the again in the document properties dialog. Um, of course, if also wants to manipulate it. If, um, if does not like how Nimbus replaces times, she might want to try another font, some liberation or whatever. And um, this is uh, not a big deal. It could be uh, a drop down list or whatever here. It is just a, uh, another request. So far for substitution, we have uh, published it some time ago, two years or so on the design block, it is nothing new. New is that we also have a large list of fonts and um, the selection is um, not so easy. One issue here, for example, is that you get the Deja Vu uh, fonts split uh, into all the um, special expressions, the sans light, sans uh, condensed, it's all one font. So that's an issue um, or something that can be uh, um, improved. An issue is it because on uh, macOS you don't get the uh, special things. Um, the, um, the actual uh, requirement is uh, that the long list needs to be structured a little bit better. It, is, it should be easy to find the fonts that you are looking for and um, you don't want to get bothered by all the variations. A proposal on the ticket is um, that it goes into a submenu. So you open the drop down and in the submenu you get the uh, variations, the, okay, the light and condensed and whatever it is. Another idea is to have two drop downs next to each other. In the first one you select the font and the next one you select the uh, style of this font. Third one is uh, to uh, indent the uh, styles a little bit. None of these are really nice but we have to find a solution for this problem. Maybe I have it later. Um, next thing is uh, that uh, you don't, then you not only want to get bothered by, by the uh, uh, styles, you also want to just uh, get a condensed list uh, of fonts that is, uh, used, uh, that is useful in the current situation. Um, do I have an example? Yes, example is um, on my system installed P052. I don't know where it comes from, it's something which belongs to X if I remember correctly, or whatever. I also do not care about um, Greek and no Hebrew and Arab. I don't speak any Arab, so I would like to hide all these fonts that I never use to get a small list where I can uh, find it more quickly than today. It becomes even more relevant with uh, the new Notor fonts. It, um, adds a lot to the, um, to the selection. So what we need is something um, to probably filter the font list. Um, requests have been made to find favorites. Maybe I uh, want to um, uh, use a large number of fonts for my design work, but Usually I write documents and when I write documents I just want to have five different fonts to choose from. So I want to favorite things. I want to select the um, fonts um, that are used for my local system. Uh, Chinese people probably do not care about fonts that 
don't have any of these uh, Unicode uh, pointers in it. And um, what else? Uh, used fonts in the document is also something that you want to uh, move on a, a specific position. There are um, some uh, possible solutions. It's nothing that's really completely new. Text maker and scribbles has a way to hide fonts um, from the uh, from the UI. Just don't use it. It is here this checkbox. We could do it kind of similar uh, way in our options dialog. Um, it is. Um, uh, just a table that lists all the fonts and what you click is shown on the right side with an option to make it a favorite, it's a checkbox at the options part and to disable the, the active uh, thing, meaning if something is not active it is not shown in the drop down list. I would also condense the, um, the, uh, the styles, that is my solution. Um, condensing means um, here the variations of Deja Vu Sans with nine different styles is just collapsed into one style. And if you want to get more, I'm a little bit too far, you have to uh, do it in, in, in a special dialogue. The, the, um, what we want to achieve is a small list of fonts that is well sorted and that um, informs me about my own favorites. I want to e easily and quickly find what I'm looking for um, and what is being replaced. That is, again, what I told you before, it's the, the warning sign here is a different icon. And way too, uh, too small to read. Um, the style variation, as I said, is uh, accessible in the, in the uh, character dialogue, so I would make it easy. I would make this drop down as easy as possible. And if you want to go with, uh, with um, uh, Deja Vu, Sans, Condense, Special, Number 3, you have to go in the character style dialogue. Or you just enter it. Maybe that could work as well. Sort order should be kept. Um, the favorites uh, get a, a favorite uh, indicator, an icon. Non-active uh, fonts uh, can be, uh, should be hidden in the list and uh, non-local fonts uh, could be um, activated as non-active by default. So if you run a Chinese installation, you probably uh, set uh, the, uh, I don't know, Cantarell font as non-active by default. Seen the ten minutes left. There's one. Hey, it was quite fast. Um, <laughs> there's one button here: Add fonts, and uh, that is a requirement um, which comes uh, from the installation thing. Um, design team talks a lot about what is to replace and do we ship the liberation and the open sans and noto and whatever <laughs> things change and i think uh, we should not talk about these uh, aspects we should not uh, deal with uh, font management at all it is up to the user but if the user wants to install a font we should make it very easy and that is this uh, add font it is kind of uh, get hot new stuff uh, known from KDE, you click the button, you get an, uh, a, a short dialog which lists um, extensions, in this case font extensions on our extension side or whatever, and you get a quick access and ordered to install it onto your system. The, um, the clue here is that the addition of this extension, in this case addition of fonts, is placed where you work with the, action, with the things. And this uh, tight connection between the program and the extension side, that's important. So this management is uh, yeah, kind of my pet. Next step here is, uh, I think um, it is clear that you should be able to manipulate the uh, substitution table. That's the second tab here in this um, configuration dialog and it um, shows again what you, uh, um, it does not add anything new. 
uh, you have uh, screen only and screen printer. It's possible today, and it's some in a, some weird way to. Uh, there's a third option, uh, all three, or I don't remember. It's nothing new except the preview, uh, how it looks if you replace it. And of course, you, you should be able to manipulate the replacement table. Um, I believe, yeah. That's a picture from today on our bug tracker. Um, I don't know the him on TDF 91130. And his proposal is to not have a drop down. I didn't find a better place for it. Just put it onto the end. It is a brand new proposal. Um, not what? Not my proposal. Uh, left column shows uh, the used fonts, and uh, his request is: Why do we need to have just one drop down, one small list? There's uh, plenty of space on the UI, and uh, we can have more columns in um, in a certain way sorted so that. I think uh, it's clear what the idea is. Show more on the screen. Um, to summarize, we need improvements on the font substitution. In the info bar, the uh, substitution table should be more easily accessible. The drop down uh, could receive some, um, could, would need some love, and the preview is uh, uh, really nice to have. That's actually what the user wants. Um, we need means to hide and Highlight fonts, hide unused, highlight favorites. Should go into the options dialog and uh, the font selection drop downs. All these stuff has to be reworked, kind of. And um, the last thing, the um, font extension thing, so that we can uh, that the user is not um, that we do not need to ship fonts. That's all. Thank you. Install fonts in, in a, yeah, uh, the rationale behind why to um, not install fonts is uh, questioned, challenged. Yes, um, we install fonts in a in a, in a certain way. Our, uh, in our user uh, directory, and the fonts that we install is, are not available on the system. So if you are on Linux and you use a packet manager, uh, you have two different ways to install stuff. It's a problem to me. I don't like it. And um, the other part is um, we, we ship fonts ourselves uh, and probably spam users with unwanted stuff. And the user cannot get rid of it. Let's say you don't like the Google stuff and you don't like Noto. What do you have to do? It is not that easy to find the right place to delete the file. That's, I have to admit, it's rather my personal idea. I want to have a, a smaller base system and easy ways to extend it. Um, I, don't, I don't know uh, what's with uh, other platforms, but on Linux there's font config, and there are some uh, substitution rules already. I, I think call a lot substitution rules already. Um, so. Um, yeah, that's how it works today. Um, font config is uh, the first step. Second is that we have a fixed list of association between fonts. Yeah, of course. And, and usually there's, there's some part of system configuration which can be overwritten by user context and some configuration which can be overwritten. And I think some of the substitutes cannot be overwritten. How you do you how do you deal with that? You are the expert in, in that field. No, um, I don't understand why we shouldn't uh, make it possible for the user to deal with the substitution table more easily. That it's not easy to go into the configuration somewhere deep in your system 
you have to know that font config uh, exists, you have to know how it works, you have to find the right configuration file, you have to edit these uh, replacement tables. And it affects all applications everywhere. And I, it feels not really what, uh, like what the user wants. He wants probably for one document the uh, Windows font replaced by some certain or in the, in the other way. Yeah. Uh, but I think you have to approach the font config guys to uh, get it to the board. Yeah. I would generate this uh, list. Somehow there has to be a, a default list of substitutions. Somehow uh, it has to be generated uh, by default. And the, uh, the, the user is only able to overwrite the default. And the generation is font config. On Linux, I don't know how it works on Windows. So. But yes, that, a lot of questions are around the topic.